The design thinking and solutions for the dam were complex and led by a very experienced team, uh, including international experts in RCC dam design, uh, construction materials, geology, and also geomechanical modeling. The location of the dam was in that sense challenging because of not only because of the geology but also because of a nearby public road which had to remain open during the construction of the dam. With over 25 kilometres of tunnels constructed, the project was challenging and rewarding from a tunnelling perspective. The power station cabins are located approximately 240 metres below surface level. Due to the depth of the power station cabin complex, it was difficult to obtain extensive geotechnical investigation drilling early on in the project scheme development. We relied on a combination of geological interpretation and staged physical investigations to develop a model of the geotechnical conditions at the location of the power station complex. Oh yeah, uh, some of the challenges were found at the detailed design stage uh, because of the reduced design flood and downstream geological considerations. The gated spillway and plunge pool arrangement was changed to an ungated spillway with ceiling basin. This eliminated the uh, risk of any potential undermining of the plunge pool foundations with the weakened foundation conditions. This simplified the uh, dam construction, reduced maintenance requirements which would be required for gates. We had to make some significant design changes to Susu Dam to develop solutions for the faulted foundation and related concerns about the strength and water tightness of the structure. One challenge was shifting from the high cementitious content roller compacted concrete that was originally proposed to a low cementitious content alternative combined with an impervious upstream geomembrane. The type of concrete mix uh, used for a roller compacted concrete dam has a direct influence on other aspects of the dam such as uh, its shape, uh, the contraction joint spacings and the need for pre-cooling of the concrete or its constituents. It became clear that we needed to shift the design philosophy to a low cementitious content RCC mix to provide a more ductile structure capable of accommodating the variations in the foundation rock. This solution was complex. It meant rewriting specifications during construction and implementing a number of other design changes, um, such as an external grouting plinth. However, it ultimately offered a lot of benefits, improving the resilience and structural integrity of the dam and reducing the leakage potential through the dam body. In the power station, there's 292 megawatt turbine generator units. In addition to the units, there's a lot of other mechanical and electrical equipment associated with the units, plus the building services systems. Two of the very important building services systems are the firefighting and detection systems and the ventilation systems. These systems need to be well designed to ensure safe egress from the power station in an emergency. SMEC was able to provide resources for this project to carry out all the roles from the original feasibility study right through to design and the construction. And we had very good continuity during the project too, so it was always possible for the site staff to refer back to the designers and ensure that all the design criteria were properly being applied during the construction works. The project has achieved uh, the goal to provide uh, picking power and spending reserve for frequency control of the national grid and also this for the local communities to benefit commercially uh, during the project construction where several thousand workers were employed. It has been really exciting to take all the lessons learned from the Ulujula Hydroelectric Project and apply it to the resurgence of hydropower scheme development in Australia.